In the garden world today, the buzzword is really color. Everybody is into bright, intense colors, and retailers know that the best way to sell items in the spring is to have masses of pink and orange and red out for maximum impact. But we'd like to talk a little bit about the uh, alternatives today of using green as certainly an important color in the garden and using the whites and grays, the light tones to add some coolness to the southern garden. Often by midsummer, those intense spring colors uh, begin to wear on you as you endure another day of 100 degree weather and you look for something cooler or in the evening that shines in the light after dark when you're night lighting a property. So we're going to look at a few plants here in the white garden at the NCSU Arboretum today and starting with the plant that is sort of over and around me here, the weeping blue atlas cedar. Certainly one of the more dramatic and magnificent of landscape plants not often seen in the landscape simply because it's slow growing and when it's small in a nursery and fairly expensive, people tend to not pick it up. But once it's installed and begins to grow, it will grow rather rapidly. And it is a plant that has no ability to support itself, so it needs to be taken like a vine almost, even though it's a woody plant, and trained up into an arbor or trellis or allowed to go over a pathway such as this. And as a conifer, it is evergreen. It has the foliage on year round and with this bl beautiful blue-gray color, it really is an addition to a garden at any time of the year. So we can use plants like this, with so the silver or gray or blue foliage, as a contrast to the normal background green that we see in most of our gardens. And then once we have that, we can begin to come in with other woody plants and perhaps herbaceous materials. And we see three examples in through here, Artemisia or silver mound uh, toward my foot here, a very widely grown plant that's common in North Carolina and extremely variable. There are types that will only get two or three inches tall, others that will get four or five feet tall, but they're all noted for having this wonderful silver gray foliage and then usually white and sometimes yellow flowers on them in the summertime. Uh, a word of uh, perhaps a little bit about warning on Artemisias, some of them can be a little bit aggressive in terms of spread and invasiveness, so do consider that in terms of taking a look at them. Then we have seasonal color or annual color like the pansies, which are just beginning to fade here as we go into our, our summer heat. But certainly in the last five years, pansies have taken on a tremendous impact in our commercial landscape world and in the home gardens. We've learned that they can become a year-round, or excuse me, a winter uh, interest for a long season of color in the garden. And then we have kind of special plants that you don't see as often because they don't fit the normal commercial world. Things like these foxgloves, which are so beloved of, of English gardeners. And the problem with them is that foxgloves are in a peculiar category uh, called biennials. Uh, most of the garden plants we grow are annuals. You start them in the spring, they grow in the season, then they die in the fall. Biennials live two years, and you need to start them one year through the summer, they go through the winter, bloom, and then they pass on their way after that. So they take a little more time and effort, but they are available and certainly home gardeners can handle them by seed and grow lots of them at very little cost in the garden. And they are spectacular additions to the garden as well. And then we can come on and look at, say, perhaps more traditional garden features. Roses, of course, are a great favorite of all gardeners. And the typical gardener probably goes for the hybrid tea roses. But one of the characteristics that goes with that very beautiful plant is the fact that generally that type of rose needs more spraying, uh, more maintenance, more pruning to keep them really at their showpiece. And so there's a lot of interest right now in the so-called shrub roses or old roses, which uh, perhaps need less spraying, can be allowed to just mound and grow as big shrubs and give long season color. And we've tested quite a number of such plants here at the NC State University Arboretum. And one of my personal favorites, I suppose, is the rose that you're seeing here. One called Nasturina, which came to us from um, a firm that's fairly famous for old roses in Texas called the Antique Rose Emporium. It's a rose that goes back into the 1800s and was originally found in the Middle East in a harem garden. And so it's, it's been around for nearly 200 years. It's very fragrant, which is nice, and we've lost that in a lot of our, our garden roses today. And the thing that I particularly like, it never needs spraying here. Uh, it always has clean foliage and it starts blooming in spring and blooms all the way until frost. Now, it's heavier here at the springtime, but as you go through the season, there's almost always flowers on it at any given point. And then to come back to our, our beginning theme of woody plants, 
we looked at the beginning at a weeping blue atlas cedar, a conifer that had foliage on year round. Well, here we come to a, another weeping plant that's actually been trained on a wall and then pruned uh, sort of as an espalier. Probably a plant that it has its fame in England in the original white garden that what Vita Sackville West established at Sissinghurst in England, probably the most visited garden in England at this point. And she framed her entire white garden with the centerpiece of a weeping silver pear. Uh, they're not common in America, but they are available through plant specialists that you can find with hunting. But they do have silvery foliage, which stays on it all summer, white flowers in the spring, and if it's grown as a freestanding plant, it makes a beautiful, weeping, arching plant of a great beauty and delicacy. And then, of course, we have the green materials, as we mentioned, and then you begin to add into it bulbs that come through various seasons, adding in summer annuals. And so you can carry this white, gray, silver, blue with a backdrop of green through any garden for a great deal of interest here in North Carolina.